Hello everyone, I am Chris Samuel and today I'll be representing my capstone which is called Automotive Heads Up Display. Um, so uh, we'll, start, we'll have the following content. I'll provide a brief introduction, some background information and then we'll dive into the technical description. I'll talk about the challenges, acknowledgements and we'll conclude the presentation. So, um, first of all, um, what is a heads-up display? Um, I believe many of you are familiar with this concept. It's a basically it's a transparent display that uh, presents data to the user uh, with a specific controllers and other equipment. It has a wide range of views. It can be used in the automotive industry, in the uh, military, as you can see in the airplanes, fighter jets, and uh, of course it's mostly used uh, in the uh, community, in the people that are often using them uh, the most. Basically, uh, this, is, this device is used for uh, providing, illustrating, displaying the most important essential data information to the user. And this, uh, the most important part of the device is that it prevents the a uh, loss of focus, consciousness, and it uh, makes the user concentrate on their task, their road, and etc. So, before I move on, uh, I would like to uh, mention that uh, what was the motivation for doing this project uh, uh, specifically. Um, uh, I would like to say that uh, I have. Uh, it's very interesting to me the automotive industry and uh, this technology I could see emerging very quickly. But besides that, it has also been shown that uh, very long time ago uh, there were some uh, experiments, some designs that had this exact idea in mind. And as time flies, we, uh, I personally see that a lot of uh, industries, a lot of car brands actually start developing this technology, which is also proving to be very effective. Um, so let's move on. Um, I would like to say that, uh, first of all, let's see how does the heads-up display HUD system work. As you can see, um, there are a couple of key components to the system. Uh, first of all, uh, it's the projection system. Here's an example of that. Uh, then we have the combiner or the so-called glass, plexiglass often. Here is an example. Then we have the sensors and data sources. Uh, such as the, uh, there are sensors that collect information from the environment, like <coughs> used for, this, for brightness adjustment and etc. Then we have the main control unit, which is also displayed here. And the optics adjustments, these are used for the user for the easier uh, access and uh, usability. And finally, the uh, user interface, which not most of them have are used uh, also are, are used in uh, some cases and lastly the connectivity which is often wireless but sometimes uh, there are cases when wired connection is utilized uh, so uh, let's move on to some technical information um, I would like to say that the project is mainly consi mainly constituted of uh, hardware, electronics, uh, uh, embedded programming, and some uh, CAD modeling. Uh, so to begin with, uh, I would like to say that these are the, the main processor we'll, I'll talk about later, is the STM32 that has been utilized. And uh, this is some uh, pictures you can see of the codes of the embedded the folders, files, and the configuration file as well as you can see here. Uh, a specific software that I've used, I'll talk about later. Then you can see the clock configuration. It's also part of the CubeMX software and so on. So um, let's move on to the next part, which is uh, the diagnostic, the connectivity part, as I mentioned previously. Uh, this is uh, one of the most important parts since uh, it's responsible for the data request and data uh, providing since uh, there are only two ways of getting information from the vehicle uh, and it's one of them is uh, just directly connecting to the computer, the main computer of the vehicle 
and requesting information which the computer has to provide in a specific uh, manner. I'll talk about that later. So for this case, I have used the OBD2 scanner tool. It's a diagnostic tool mainly utilized for uh, uh, finding the error sources, the damaged parts of the vehicle when it's diagnosed. Uh, here is the scanner, the uh, pinout that you can see here. The pins, it's quite small, but uh, there are, it's very uh, difficult. It's, it has the protocol and the pinout here, but uh, this is not the part that I dive too deep because it's standard and it fits most of the vehicles. Um, so the last picture that you can see here is the CAN bus uh, request information. I have put this image here because uh, I believe this is one of the most uh, difficult parts of the project as well. Basically, this is uh, approximately how the car computer uh, sends the information that you request for. As you can see, the fuel tank level, the engine coolant, the uh, speed, the RPM, and etc. It's, it could, we could say it's a JSON file that contains the the most important information and uh, the way you access it is by their uh, let's say name their uh, value and the day you access the by their name and they is provides its value accordingly also the uh, middle picture here is one of the software uh, mobile applications that are used for the uh, let's say the testing of checking if the connection is secure between the car and the car processor and if the data is being transferred or not. Um, so as I mentioned previously, the process consists, consists of this main uh, key components, the hardware, electronics embedded and so on. Here are some brief pictures. So next uh, key point is the CAD modeling, 3D modeling. Uh, which is also uh, essential because uh, initially I had uh, in mind the fact that it needs to be uh, not it, has, it needs to be compact and user friendly. Um, but we'll see if I achieve this goal or not. Uh, but uh, this is what uh, some designs look like. As you can see, the display attachment, the screen holders, the component housings, and the LCD display holder. Um, for the hardware, uh, we have we don't have too much, but the key main key components here are the STM32 controller, the ST7565 display, uh, the HC05 Bluetooth module, uh, the e ELM327 uh, uh, scanner, and a, also a wired scanner of the same protocol. Um, so uh, one important thing I want to mention here is the Bluetooth module. Uh, this initially the project had to be completely uh, wireless. This means that the Bluetooth model had to take the entire task of transferring and receiving data from the car and it had to provide it to the controller to uh, process it. However, um, since these uh, modules mm -hmm. often tend to be broken and they uh, are not functioning very well, um, and besides that, the uh, rate is not satisfactory for this application as uh, the sequence that uh, the data is being transferred and received uh, for this application it has to be very fast since if you're driving and your, your uh, speed is, let's say, less than you are currently going, then it's not working. The uh, system is not sufficient and it's not satisfactory for the user. Oh, so, so you mean yeah. the 327 isn't fast enough? send the information? Uh, no, uh, the Bluetooth module is not fast enough, okay. but the wired connection is okay. immediately, it works uh, very quickly. So uh, that is the reason why I shifted into the wire, uh, wired connection mode. Uh, essentially, it's the same uh, head unit as you can see here, except it's wired and not wireless. Um, so um, next up, We'll uh, talk about the electronics, which is also not quite much here. The STM, the LCD connection pinout here. Uh, the Bluetooth, I also included, but then it's removed. And also I used a um, couple of ST-Link debugger tools, uh, USB header tools, for um, pushing the codes into the 
uh, AST, STM controller and also debugging. Uh, besides this, there was also an additional USB uh, uh, USB link that was used to uh, give power to the STM only and uh, to be able to communicate with the PC or when the code is being developed. Uh, I'll talk about that later when I show the design. So here's the design currently. And uh, as you can see, the partly the disassembled uh, part of the project here is main, it consists of mainly of the plexiglass, the holder, that this goes into the holder, the breadboard which uh, secures the STM controller, the LCD in its corresponding case, and the entire housing for the components which is located on the right upside. This is also for the uh, so for storing all these components in one uh, uh, place, and this is the assembled uh, product for the final product. Um, again, as I said, the uh, plexiglass <coughs> display with this holder, which is also adjustable for the for user uh, interface for easier use and accessibility. The uh, screen holder, the LCD. It's housing compartment, the, this is the entire upper case which fits most of the electronics and hardware. As I mentioned, there are two USBs. This is for the PSS ST link, which is used for uh, pushing the code into the uh, STM. And this is used for the, uh, let's say, uh, supplementary supply. However, later I uh, shifted to a uh, different uh, power supply, which is a 4.5 volt uh, battery that uh, I use just in case if the system goes wrong and I have no power, I can at least provide it with some sufficient power so it can function. Uh, but uh, regardless, the main power source for the device is going to be uh, via the uh, uh, OBD scanner, which connects directly to the computer of the uh, car. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, here are some top views and front views of the system. Also, I can display it here. So as I mentioned, uh, the one of the key things that I was going for is the user friendliness and the accessibility. And this is uh, important because uh, I believe user has to have the access to adjust and have the optics as it wishes. Uh, so here is an example. So, uh, as I mentioned, the size, the compactness I was going for, it's not compact, but uh, at least it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, so yeah, I'll put this here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, again, more photos and pictures, as I mentioned, the OBD scanner. Um, and also one thing that I uh, took into consideration, however, it's uh, I had a different design in mind, is the fact that it's need, it needs to fit uh, as many vehicles as possible. What I mean by that is the design, the uh, modeling has to be universal. So uh, one can just take plug in and attach it to the <coughs> dashboard of the vehicle and operate it. Um, however, this uh, means, me, meant that I had to have a universal, uh, some a resin type of material that could be bent and adjustable, so it could be just, it could take the form shape of the dashboard. But since this was not achieved, I just came up with a more simple solution, which is just attaching a rubberized uh, sticker, which can, which allows for a fairly, uh, fairly good connection bonding and it uh, can be used for every dashboard. Uh, you can just uh, put it there and go. 
so uh, next uh, part is the embedded programming, as I mentioned. Since uh, this was one of the most, uh, this was the most difficult part of the project. Since, since uh, the uh, libraries, the codes, the most of the uh, uh, software part had to be uh, selected specifically accordingly and uh, from a various uh, from a different sources. Since uh, there are many multiple libraries for, let's say, the displays for the uh, STM as well. However, uh, for the specific display that I chose, the ST, oh no, it's not here, the ST7565, the libraries for this display are very rare and they are often uh, unfunctional, so it's uh, almost impossible to get your uh, the, uh, desired result here. But <laughs> nevertheless, I was still able to detect some libraries with their uh, some sort of working codes, codes, and I have, of course modified them to fit my needs. Uh, so since the codes are very big, the libraries used are a lot. I included some of them here. Each directory contains numerous uh, numerous files, uh, codes include files, C files, and etc. Here are just some of the brief pictures that uh, I could attach here, so you can see for the. Fonts for the source code, for the OBD scanner, and for some graphics for displaying the numbers and etc. Um, so finally, we move on to the testing part. And as I mentioned previously, the STLink uh, Connect uh, programmer was used with this with the STM32 uh, microcontroller. And some uh, Bluetooth devices were initially used to detect if the if a car can see the module, the processor, or not, if there is an established connection or not. So, uh, as uh, part of the testing, there's uh, there are also errors and malfunctions, and one of them was uh, after plugging the OBD scanner into the car. Most of the time, some errors came up in the dashboard. For example, the check engine went on or some other <coughs> levels just uh, went crazy. Uh, and this is this goes to show that uh, the, the program and everything has to be so universal that every car can fit this. However, later I did some research and found out that uh, the OBD scanner is available for a models uh, above some year. Uh, I don't remember the year, but uh, uh, late, the least models do not work as well. So that was the solution to the errors. And uh, the utilized software tools and other applications, as you can see uh, here, are the SOLIDWORKS for the computer edit design, the STM32Cube IDE for the code integration and development, and finally the CubeMX for the um, controller, the chip configuration, the pinout configuration. And uh, the printing software tools, Zortrax, Zortrax and uh, some uh, supplementary embedded development tools such as Kale, which I didn't end up using because of lack of knowledge in this software. So um, some live testing here. This is an early protocol here, as you can see, with uh, no casing and nothing but the uh, pure uh, screen. Um, so yeah, here we can also have a video. This is just to show that uh, the display, when it's uh, shifted around, user can still have access to see the figures uh, correctly since while driving you have to have this knowledge and if your head is tilted or the car is tilted, you should always have this viewpoint in front of you. Uh, some more testing here. <coughs> As you can see, um, these are some initial experiments with uh, no casing, with no modeling, but the uh, main feature is working and the numbers are, their speed is visible. This, this is the first uh, try of trying to film and see the uh, speed. 
When it is daytime, it doesn't work? Uh, it works, but uh, since the piece plate brightness is not very bright, and the plexiglass that is installed here, it's uh, it's not made for mostly. It's made for the nighttime, but uh, this uh, case, it's for this case, is uh, not very very well, very well visible. But as I said, the, the uh, plexiglass has the property of absorbing light and uh, allowing the user to see the uh, screen more efficiently. You can choose any parameter to display, or you just have this is the easiest one to choose. Uh, the which like, like engine temperature. No, it's um, I'll get to it in a second. But uh, to answer short, it's uh, mostly uh, PID controllers in the car, and uh, every time you need to request the function from the car to receive the uh, data, it takes a lot of time, and it has protocols there. But for the sake of just easing, uh, easier task, and just showing the main uh, goal here, I just chose to show the the, uh, the speed. <laughs> Uh, for the challenges uh, that I faced during the project, uh, most of the most the most difficult part was the uh, work with the STM32 microcontroller, since uh, it has its own designated software, and besides software, there is another software that uh, allows the user to the, do the configurations of the pinouts, and this is necessary for the the system to operate. Uh, also, as mentioned previously, the LCD display had uh, numerous libraries, but most of them were not functional, and it was uh, very hard to find a working one. Uh, and the Bluetooth data transfer, as I said, I moved, I shifted to a wired one. Uh, and the Canvas system, which, is, which also took some time to get used to it and understand how to uh, request and receive data. However, the major aid here is that uh, most libraries that work with the Canvas are already integrated with the functions, the necessary PID controllers, and they are uh, registers, if I'm not mistaken, that you need to request to receive the corresponding data. And lastly, as I said, the filming the prototype in action was quite hard with one hand. Uh, and lastly, the acknowledgements here I want to mention uh, firstly my parents, the AUA engineering faculty and staff, AUA engineering junior and senior students, and all the people that you can see here, uh, Dr. Paracha Makaraj Makarian, who was the most essential, who had the most important part in the project, Ms. Atenik and Manasyan, and my other teammates, my colleagues that you can see here also. They all had a huge contribution into my work. And thank you. If you had a stronger LCD, could you display it on the windshield? Um, this, uh, that's, I, let me tell the difference. Um, for the, um, the, when the car manufacturers uh, include this heads up display into the dashboard, the windscreen is also made differently. The material, the characteristics are different because they, they uh, absorb most of the light when it's projected. And often if it's not there, people just take some uh, tape that is also absorbent and they just tape it there. So the light can be absorbed and focused there and not be dispersed. Um, I actually like the presentation you just did is comprehensive. It gives uh, almost a complete overview of what you did. But I want us to take a step back and have a wider look at this. So in our new projects, it's almost always, almost always the case that there are different groups working on the same project, achieving the same goals, as you also presented in your report in detail. Um, but each one of these groups, each one of these projects is, is focused on achieving at least one main goal, having um, something that they believe they can do better than the other groups or doing mm -hmm. something differently. So I want to know, in your opinion, what's the single most important point that you think you're doing better or different than other groups? It could be technical, it could be financial, the execution of the project, market application, it could be anything. Um, I believe um, 
probably the key aspect of the thief that differentiates this project is the cost because uh, the main controllers, the main components are quite cheap. The hardware only utilizes uh, the STM controller and uh, the wiring, the other uh, OBD scanner tool, they are also very accessible and they are not that expensive. Um, besides that, I think the versatility, the universal <coughs> point of view of the project is enormous because uh, I have actually seen many such designs that are just, they are just stationary and they do not allow the user to adjust, have adjustability, so they can fit into their uh, custom design and their, their preference. So uh, probably I'll say cost is uh, and assembling also, it's easy to assemble, just plug and go. Mm -hmm. These are I think the key. Um, key since components. you mentioned the cost factor, how in, in percentage, roughly speaking, how much of your project is open source, like the, specifically the software aspect of it, or the 3D printing files, you designed these, you mm -hmm. took them from somewhere else. Um, but again, when it comes to the software and the embedded system aspect, what was the percentage? Half of it is open source or closed? So um, the embedded, as I mentioned, was the most difficult part uh, since uh, the libraries. So, uh, it's, let me say that uh, most libraries that work, let's say, with the STM, the Canvas, and the LCD, they are available publicly. However, adjusting them and fitting into your project is the most difficult one. Also, the configuration of the chip, uh, the TubeMX software, that's also a custom design because it's not it's nowhere in the GitHub or anywhere. So I'd say mostly 50-60% uh, is open source in regards of the code libraries, but the rest of the configurations, the pinout design and etc. are obviously done by me and Mr. Makar. But uh, if it's required, we can obviously share the codes and the references. I would say it's very impressive work. Very, I was impressed by the research that has been done in the field and also the working prototype. Uh, I have a question about: uh, Have you measured the accuracy of the reading? Yeah, because uh, I saw uh, showing eight kilometers per hour on the dashboard and twelve on your ADAPT uh, display, and they also the total latency of the system. How? quick it reads and uh, scans and displays? Um, I haven't uh, done the rate testing of measuring the latency or the, let's say the rate that the data is transferred uh, because of the following reason. And that is the OBD scanner. It's uh, not wireless design, it's wired design. And it uh, provides, I believe, instant immediate response since it's wired and it travels with the speed of light. And once you just accelerate, it uh, requests data. However, the thing with the latency that you noticed, I believe it could be due to the delays uh, in the uh, embedded system, in the embedded coding. Uh, by saying this, uh, I mean that the while coding, there have been many prototypes of testing debugging, and I have put some delays, like milliseconds, into the code to actually see some uh, result and then move on to the next part of the code. So uh, probably if I remove and uh, make the code more optimal, let's say, remove all the unnecessary stuff, uh, I believe it could work more quickly, but I have not taken any measurements about the rates because I just didn't know how to do so. Okay. And one small technical question. Yes, yes. So you've been working directly with OBC, right? Have you been using the CAN ILOs? Mm. Did you do a decoupling, like offload decouplers? Or um, couplers? Because you've been using, you've been wiring the CANs to your STM board, mm -hmm. right? Have you used any, no. any decoupling there? No, so uh, the, this part I forgot to mention, it's not uh, wired to the STM, since um, I could the end of the OBD scanner is, I believe, mini USB or micro USB, I cannot remember. And I could find a attachment, a converter <laughs> that has a female uh, USB mini and the output is male uh, micro USB. 
and that's how I can directly connect to the STM's uh, input uh, source and provide power and the necessary information exactly from that port. So you've been using it through the USB? Yes. Okay.